Hi guys, Mr. Mascaro here. Today we're going to take a look at how to create project number one, frame by frame. All right, so if you take a look at the demo on Blackboard, you'll see that what we have going on here, all right, uh, is relatively simple. There is a ball or some object that's moving from one end of the screen to the other. And then there is also a background, a non-changing, a static background. All right, so pretty straightforward. Uh, the way that we're going to accomplish this is we have, uh, we're going to create two layers. One is going to be our movement layer, where the action takes place, where the ball lives and the action takes place. And then the background is going to live on a second layer, which is going to be lower than the ball layer. All right, so let's take a look at Flash and see how to create that. All right, so you bring up Flash and you get this screen. And as we've discussed in class, uh, everything that we're going to do is going to be an ActionScript 3.0 file. So we'll go ahead and create new ActionScript 3.0. And that's going to take us to our, uh, to our, our stage and our work area. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a ball. And uh, let me just zoom in on the stage here a little bit, just change the size of the stage, make it a little bit larger. That'll work. All right, so I'm going to go over to the uh, rectangle tool. Remember that the oval tool lives underneath the rectangle tool. So I'm going to click on the rectangle tool once and then again and select the oval tool. And then uh, for my ball, I'm going to create a nice uh, or use a nice bright color like red or something like that. So I'm going to change the fill color of the ball to red. And the stroke color I'm going to leave as, uh, as black on the outside. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go onto the stage at this point, and I'm going to draw a circle. Now you can draw whatever you want. Uh, but I'm going to draw a circle. And uh, as we discussed in class, the way to draw a circle, and I hate to use the word perfect circle, all right, but um, I want to have a circle, not an oval. So I'm going to press and hold the shift key while I click and drag uh, the, the tool. All right, when I release, right, I have a for lack of a better term, a perfect circle. All right, now remember that animation is a sequence of pictures that uh, each picture is slightly different from the one before it. And those pictures are shown to us in such a way that uh, it gives the illusion of movement, the optical illusion of movement. The project calls for a total of 50 frames. All right, so just over four seconds in length. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to basically move the ball in each new picture just a little bit. Okay, I want to create, I want to define my first picture. Okay, so I'm going to drag a selection box around the object. And then I'm going to position it where I want the animation to start. All right, so we're going to follow you know, kind of a meandering path around the stage a little bit. All right, so I've defined my first picture. All right, I want the ball to start here, and then eventually it'll, you know, it'll, it'll kind of wander around the stage a little bit, all right, for about 50 frames. All right, so I have my first picture is complete. All right, I want to then create a new keyframe. To do that, we press the F6 key. All right, so for Lenovo's, you press the F6 key. For, uh, for Max, you press the Fn and then the F6 key, okay? Notice that down here in the timeline, I went from one keyframe to two keyframes. That means that I have now two pictures, all right? Right now, both pictures are exactly the same, so it doesn't look like anything is happening. But in picture number two, I wanna select my object and I want to move it slightly from where it was. All right, Flash has that nice feature that the, uh, shows where the object was in the previous frame. Okay, so we kind of see that as a shadow. All right, and then when I let go, 
um, you know, I've repositioned the circle in the second frame. So now I have picture number one and then picture number two, and you can see that the ball is in a slightly different position. All right, I'm gonna press the uh, F6 key again. All right, again, Mac guys, uh, FN and then the F6 to create a third picture. Select my object, move it slightly. We don't wanna move it too much. All right, we want the changes to be gradual. So now I have three pictures, one, two, three. All right, and then I'm gonna just kind of keep repeating that, pro that process every time. FN, F6, select a ball if it's not already selected, and then move it slightly. So we're gonna do that rather quickly for the next uh, 47 or so frames. All right, so FN, F6, or, or F6. All right, move the ball. F6, move the ball. F6, move the ball, and so on, and so on, and so on. All right, so I'm going to try to speed up the process here a little bit as we move along. All right, feel free to, you know, change directions, All right? If you screw up, uh, Control-Z undoes the last action. Remember, don't get uh, impatient. Frame by frame animation is a tedious process. So we can start to uh, build an appreciation for uh, animators that created animation by actually drawing. all of their individual pictures. All right, a little bit later on, uh, maybe next week or in a couple of weeks, we'll take a look at uh, an animator who was one of the early animators and how she used to create flip books and that, that style of animation. And her early animation work was all drawings. So every time that she needed a new picture, she basically had to redraw the entire thing. All right, so I'm getting there. Picture four. All right, again, all I'm doing is pressing F6, moving the ball a little bit. All right, almost there. Got about 50, 50 frames or so. All right, we can kind of scrub back and forth, and you can see where my ball has gone. All right. If I press the Enter key, it will run the animation at full speed on the stage in my project file. Okay. Remember that full speed is 24 frames per second. All right, so it takes 24 individual pictures to create one second of animation. All right, so in terms of my uh, working layer, the ball layer, that layer is done. I haven't added the background yet. Usually what I do is I'll create uh, either the working layer or the background layer first and then do the second one later. Usually I like to create the working layer first that's usually the hardest one to do. And then I'll add a background layer, a static background layer at the end. All right. So now that um, my ball layer is done, this is a good time to, to save the file. All right. You wouldn't want to have done all that work, uh, moving the object, uh, and then losing your work because, you know, your machine crapped out or flash crashed or whatever. Uh, flash does not have an auto save or an auto recovery feature. All right, so always make sure that you are saving often and saving early. All right, so we'll go ahead and save this. I'm going to uh, name it something descriptive like Project 1 Tutorial. You'll name it Project 1 Your Name or how, however you want it. Uh, pro probably, you know, Project 1 Your Name is probably a good thing. All right, I'm going to save this in my... Uh, 
uh, I guess my Google Drive and Flash folder. This up a little bit. Okay, so Google Drive, Flash. All right. And save. Okay. So remember, always, always save. All right. Anytime that you pause, you should save. It's always a good idea. All right. Next. Uh, there's a couple of things that we want to do now. All right, number one, I'm going to deal with multiple layers. So I'm going to add a background layer in a moment. While I'm here, though, I should probably name my layer something a little bit more descriptive than layer one. All right, this project is only going to have two layers. Uh, so, you know, layer one, layer two is, you know, we could get away with it, but let's get in the habit of naming our layers uh, because we'll, we will get into some animations that might be, you know, 10, 12, 15 layers deep, uh, and uh, you know, understanding what's on each layer might become a little bit more, uh, more of a more of a challenge. All right, uh, so always having a descriptive layer name is a good idea. All right, so uh, where it says layer one down here, I'm going to double click there, and then I'm going to go ahead and name my layer. All right, so this is going to be the ball layer, so I'll just name it ball. All right, so. Type in ball and hit enter, or type in whatever you want to name your layer, and that's it. All right, the next thing that I want to do is I want to lock this layer. All right, so Flash, when we have multiple layers uh, and we're trying to interact with a particular uh, object on the screen, Flash may or may not choose the correct layer for us. We always want to have only the, uh, the layer that we're working on unlocked or visible at any given point. So uh, you'll see over here on the layer control box that there is an eyeball and there is a padlock. All right, so the eyeball, and then there are dots underneath uh, the eyeball and the padlock. Okay, so if I want to hide a particular layer while I develop a second layer, I can always click on the dot next to the eyeball. That hides the layer. All right, so you can see that there's, there's nothing there, right? If I scrub back and forth, I can't see the ball. So that layer is now hidden and locked, or... All right, I can bring it back, and I, if I want to maintain the visual of that layer but not interact with it, I'll go ahead and click on the dot under the padlock. All right, so now, all right, if I try to draw something on that particular layer, all right, you can see that there's a little do not enter sign next to my pencil, and if I click on it, it'll say the current layer ball is either locked or hidden. And then it'll ask you, would you like to unlock uh, the layer so that you can actually interact with it? All right, so right now I'm going to uh, go ahead and click on no. I do not want to interact with the ball layer. All right, but what I do want to do is I want to add a new layer. So down in the lower left-hand corner of our layer control box are three icons, new layer, new folder, and delete. Okay, those are pretty self-explanatory. If I want to delete an entire layer, I would just uh, you know, select it and hit the trash can, and that would kill the layer. All right, new folders, we're never, we're, we don't deal with folders, so don't worry about that, but we do deal with new layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the new layer icon. All right, the layer, is, the layer two, all right, is going to be my background, so I'm gonna go ahead and rename that. All right, again, double click in the layer box in the layer name. All right, and now that layer is called background. I'm gonna go ahead then and draw my background. now. If I go back to uh, my demo, all right, so what I had here was a, a hill with my name on it and a sun and then a blue sky, all right. We'll do something similar, all right. So what I will do is I will create um, a hill, a green hill. And so I'm going to use the paintbrush and a green color, all right, I guess for grass, all right. And then the paintbrush width and size and all that stuff. Down at the bottom here, you have a brush shape icon, all right. So if you want different brush shapes, all right, some of you guys are artistic and know, you know, what some of these brush uh, shapes would be used for. I certainly am not. So... Um, you know, I usually just pick a standard oval shape, uh, but then you also have a brush size, right? So how thick do you want the brush to be? 
right? So I'll pick like the medium size. All right, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a hill. And notice that I am extending beyond the edges of the, uh, of the frame here, of the stage. Okay. Uh, and the reason for that is that when I run the movie, I want the, the, the movie frame itself to define my grass, all right, the hill. So in other words, we're going to have uh, the movie frame itself, all right, kind of cut off the edges. So some of the, some of the hill is going to be off stage, right, in the workspace, uh, but that's okay, all right. Um, I, I basically drew an outline for uh, the area that I want the grass to be in, all right, and then rather than, you know, kind of color all this in by hand, we can always use the paint bucket, all right? So this paint bucket up here, all right, it's a paint bucket tool. Not, don't confuse it with the fill color down here, right? It's the paint bucket tool, which is up here. I'm going to select that, and then I'm going to click inside of the uh, defined area there, inside of those borders, all right? There's a big old blob of green paint, which defines the hill. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw sun. All right, so again, the same kind of option. All right, I'm going to click on the uh, fill color, all right, and pick a, a yellow for my sun. All right, and I'm going to select the paintbrush, and I'm actually going to make the stage a little bit smaller here so I can get outside of it. Okay, again, remember the stage is the white area. And the workspace is the gray area, right? So I'm going to do basically the same thing with my sun. I'm going to make my sun, which is larger than, all right, the stage, all right, or in other words, I'm going to have some some spillover, all right, and then I'm going to use the paint bucket again to fill in that area, okay. The last thing that I want to do is I want to change the color of my stage, okay? Uh, instead of drawing a, a, blue, a, whole, a blue rectangle and filling it in as the sky, I can change the color of my stage. It's kind of like using colored paper for, uh, for drawing on, right? We don't have to draw on white paper. We can draw on green paper or blue paper or whatever it is, right? So if I just change the stage color, it's like, you know, we can change the color of the sky because everything else is going to be sky. All right. So the way to do that is I want to use my selection tool. Remember, it's always going to be the black one. Just click out in space and make sure that nothing is selected. And over here, right where it says library and properties, you want to look at your properties tab and then look at the stage color. All right. So the stage color also has a palette. All right. So I'm going to select a blue color for my stage. And you can see that the blue that I selected is here. All right, so that might be a little dark. All right, so maybe I want a little bit brighter uh, sky. All right, so that might be a little bit better. Okay, uh, and often you know just the just by changing the the background color it kind of uh, changes the whole look and feel of your uh, sequence, right? So right now, right if we take a look at this thing, right, the ball is kind of doing its thing. It seems like a nice, bright, sunny day, right? My ball is kind of moving around. Everything is happy. But simply by changing the stage color, right, uh, the whole look and feel could change, you know, kind of dramatically, all right? So uh, if I pick something like, you know, something like that, all right, now it's kind of like an Armageddon sky, uh, that sort of thing. What do I have here? You have unsafe changes. Yeah, yeah, auto recovery. Yeah, okay. All right, that's new. All right, so uh, we can go ahead and you know kind of change the whole look and feel of the uh, of the project. You know, sometimes simply by changing the stage color, right? So we have kind of like a like an orange sky. It's all very kind of ominous, right? Purple sky, even more ominous, etc. All right, but for right now, I want to keep it relatively happy, so I'm going to pick a nice blue color here. All right. Now, as I hit enter and this runs, you'll notice that the ball kind of disappears behind the hill. 
All right, so I want, in this particular case, I want the ball to be uh, topmost, all right? So I don't want the ball to disappear behind the hill. I want the ball to kind of go or move over or in front of the hill. So to do that, we can change the order of the layers, right? So right now my background layer is my topmost layer. My ball layer is my, uh, is my bottom layer simply by clicking and dragging a layer. So I'm going to click and drag the ball layer and move it upwards. You can see how it moves upwards. All right, we've changed the order of the layer. So now the ball layer is the topmost layer and the background layer is the bottommost layer. All right, so now as my ball moves around my hill, you can see that the ball actually moves above the hill. All right, so to finish this then, we always have to put our name on our work. All right, so I'm going to select another color. All right. And I'm going to select a paintbrush. All right. And I'm going to make sure that I am uh, I have the uh, ball, uh, the background layer selected. All right. So I'll make my paintbrush here. And I'm going to go ahead and put my name. All right. Just make sure that your name appears on stage. All right. So you can kind of see where the borders of your stage are. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just draw my name or write my name. Okay. In the art world, I'm always known as Jorge. All right, one name, kind of like Cher or Bono. All right, uh, and that's it. We save that file, save. Okay, we take a look at it again. We hit enter. All right, and then the last thing that we're going to take a look at is how to uh, what what the movie looks like. Right, so once my my, uh, my project file is done, and we could have done this at any point, all right, but I'm going to hit, uh, for the Lenovo guys, it's Control-Enter. For the Mac guys, it's Command-Enter. All right, and what that does is it runs our project file as a movie. All right, so you can see here that it says Project1Tutorial.swf. That means that it's a movie file, okay, and it runs our movie as a loop. All right, so you can see that our ball is moving. All right, so basically we, we run uh, frames one through 50, uh, and then once we hit frame 50, we jump back to frame one and do it all over again. All right, the project file that you will be submitting is the red one, so I do want to see the project file itself, uh, but just check the instructions on Blackboard for uh, how to submit, okay? Uh, that's it for Project 1 tutorial. If you guys have any questions, please make sure that you reach out and let me know. If not, uh, have fun animating. All right, uh, until uh, next class, this is Mr. Mascaro signing off.